video um, we're gonna cover a topic um, it gets asked a lot especially on the Speedway no <coughs> Speedway no Facebook group and the Speedway no forums which Speedway no do I use which one is the best um, which one does what so today I have a couple of them laying around my house so uh, just for that explain to you guys briefly what each Speedway no board does and which will probably be used to help you guys make a decision as to which one you think is right for you based on the features and the layout of each board. Alright, so stay tuned. Okay, so today I have three of them. There are many speedwayno boards, but just have three with me right now, three variations, and we're gonna work with that. So we have the V0.4. I think this one is a V0.4.3. We have the UA4C and this one is an NO2C. Um, there are quite a few number of speed on the boards. Pretty much the the hardware is free to be modified. Um, so you have guys just using the schematics from various speed on the boards or official boards and then making their own stuff. So you'll find guys making plug and plays for various cars and various setups, some with more or less channels to do more. Um, <clears throat> more cylinders so but we're not going to gonna go into that we're just going to go into this three and um, there's also the v0.3 but i don't have one of these with me right now so this is what it comes with this is a harmon aluminum enclosure on the v0.4 with a custom 3d printed enclosure this is also a harmon aluminum enclosure with some custom end plates for the ua4c and the no2c i have a uh I lost my train of thought. So I have an enclosure for this one, but I cannot find it right now. Um, all of these have been used. They have used pretty much almost every Speedwayno out there, except the really rare user design boards. So off the bat, you'll notice that the Speedwayno V0.4 enclosure is a bit taller. These usually retail for around the same price from WTM Tronics, but um, this one is taller because the actual board is taller. This one is pretty much the same dimensions as this, with the exception of the height. It's just a bit shorter. And the NO2C, as you can see here, you're free to make your enclosure out of this one. Right? So we're going to open up the Speedwayno enclosures, the Harmon enclosures, and we're going to have a look at the boards themselves to see what exactly we're working with. Okay, so now that they're all out of the enclosures, we can have a better look at them. So we we'll start with the v0.4 well we we'll start with the overview pretty much um this one pretty much does four channels so we can do a four cylinder engine in sequential mode we can also do six cylinders in batch eight cylinders in batch as well um these two are pretty much identical same four channels so you can do like i said four cylinders in sequential but you can do up to eight channels eight <laughs> We can do up to eight cylinders in batch. This one, on the other hand, the NO2C has two channels for fuel and two channels for spark. So we can do four cylinders in four cylinders in wasted spark, and then we can also do four cylinders in batch fire. Right, so. Um, the code can be modified so you can get use some of the channels to give it four um, fuel channels. I have a video which I'll link down below to show you how I do this, but we're not going to go into this aspect right now. So four channels, four channels, two channels, right? The V0.4 for the outputs or to make a harness or whatever you want to call it. To break out from the board you have this this is an IDC 40 pin connector which is pretty much made for these ribbon cables so the ribbon cable is actually meant to plug into here and it goes into whatever you want um, I I made a couple boards which made it easy Let's see if I have one here so this one call this the SS OBD1 so pretty much from here what would happen you'll have an OBD1 connector install that onto here you'll have this plugging into here and then the other end would plug into 
here right so this will plug into your car and then you jump uh, this to whatever connection is here so you pretty much do your wiring on this tiny board and then you pretty much plug into it but that's not what this video is about all right so functionality these two are pretty much the same the only difference with this is the breakout connectors right here like i said ribbon cable this one on the other hand i forgot the name of this connectors, but the connections are at the front so you pretty much get the connector and you crimp the pins in the wires go into here into the front of this one the no2c is here's the connector right here it's a 24 pin connector right so the harness will be coming in right there you can also buy some panel mount connectors so you can solder the wire to the board and then have the connector mounted elsewhere what else which is better which do you use well it all boils down to the configuration of what you want to use the ecus for if you want to put fit something into a maybe a factory ecu enclosure the v0.4 is probably better for you because nowadays there's also the v0.4.4 which has surface mount components so all of this tall stuff you can see the difference in height we can see the height here okay let's see if we can get a good shot for you guys I'm gonna try to do this with one hand right so this is the height you can see it's about total maybe about an inch inch and a half tall and this is the ua4c right but nowadays like i said you can buy the v0.4.4 which has surface fit mount components so everything is low profile so you pretty much fit this in a factory enclosure and then again like i said you can use this to break out some folks sort of wires directly from here to the connectors on the factory ecu i think at the end of this i'll show you i think i have one line around somewhere if you're doing a complete rewiring i would recommend this one since this one will just be an external ecu and then you build your patch harness externally and which would go to your car or you'd be the fresh harness for this one this one i would recommend if you actually just pretty much four cylinder maybe or two cylinder motorcycle you want something smaller you can use this one that's what i normally use it for or if you just have a four cylinder engine that you don't need sequential batch is fine for you then you can do this one there's a v0.3 which is a larger board but it has screw terminals to break out the harness i don't have one of these right now like i said so we're not going to go into that one every single one of them has an onboard map sensor 2.5 bar some of which some of them you can like this one you can also get a four bar map sensor so map sensor for this one is here overhangs on the board here the map sensor for the ua4c is right here the cool thing about the ua4c it also has a barometric sensor this one doesn't this one only has an onboard map just like the v0.4 right they all have slots for vr conditioners in case you're using vr sensors um the where is it the what am i looking for yes so the v0.4 has a stepper driver right here cannot recall if the i don't believe the ua 40 has a stepper driver but then again i've never used a stepper driver so i'm not too sure this one doesn't have a stepper motor driver um the stepper motor is idle valve for the subarus and a few other cars use them four wire and six wire stepper motor drivers what else do we need to know about these boards the jumpers on this one are right here again you use it to set all or vr sensor whichever you're using same for this one and this one as well this one 40 pins this one has a 24 and a 22 which would be let me see my mouth are good which would be 46 pins this one has 24. what else do we need to cover about this hmm. okay the v0.4 the arduino is on the the board 
the UA4C, the Arduino goes on the top side of the board. So that's something to note. Again, the UA4C, the NO2C, sorry, is also on the. Okay, so if you're doing a, uh, an application, it also helps to know all of these things which I've listed. It will help you choose the right board for you. The numbers on the board, for instance, the V0.4 and the V0.3, we often get folks asking which one is better and they automatically assume the higher the number, the better the board. It's not so, it's just different series in the boards. So initially Josh Stewart came out of V0.1, which was pretty much a prototyping thing he did for a golf cart or a lawnmower, if I recall correctly, V0.2. And these, I don't believe, were ever sold to the general public. V0.3, I'll try to get a photo of one of these and I'll try to put it in there somewhere, which was made afterwards, which had screw terminals. So you pretty much have a board a bit larger than this with screw terminals like this. On the V0.4, you have these screw terminals for power and ground, that's where you put it. But on the V0.3, you have these connectors alone. I'm not sure how many, cannot recall, but... So you'd have your harness going out for this. This came out shortly after. So a different series, but the V0.3 is still in production, is still being sold, is still being used. I personally don't like to use them because I found that the screw terminals are good for prototyping. However, over time, vibration, heat, and whatnot, they often make for a loose connections. So I usually generally stick with the UA4C, the V0.4, and the NO2C. Okay, what else do we need to cover about these boards? Okay, this one does not have an onboard slot or breakout for a Bluetooth module. This one does. The UA4C does. The V0.4 doesn't. This one doesn't. The NO2C, you see, I added a harness. I think I sold it to yes, I think I sold it to the board itself. I think I have a video showing that already. This one right here, the Bluetooth module can be soldered directly to the board. The latest revision of this one, the V0.4.4, I believe it is, it has the provisions for the Bluetooth module. So that was fixed in the later models. This one still doesn't have it this one is just bare bones so you pretty much have to wire it in so i think i just about covered everything um yeah one more thing um you can see some connections here this uln chipset basically you need to add this to make use of the fan output and the fuel pump and a few here i think it's pin 18 to 18 to 20 if i recall correctly but this pin so is it 16 to 20 on this side the proto area so you need to add this there are links available online to show you how to add this if you don't do this you won't be able to use the pins which are on the the proto area on the latest version of the speedwayner the v0.4.4 this was fixed so you don't need to make um, perform these mods this one you don't need to mod anything this one is pretty much set so Again, if you're doing a installation inside of an ECU case, maybe you have a factory Honda per se, and you want to add, uh, you want to get the factory ECU and add something in there, this one will probably be better for you. That's what I wouldn't recommend it for. You can also use it as a wiring ECU. Again, I have done this. This is what I use on the Alteza, the Toyota Alteza. This one, I would, Pretty much rec always recommended for wiring. If you're doing a fresh installation, maybe you want to make a patch harness from there to go to your, from here to go to your factory ECU, your factory harness, you use that. If you want to use that and then completely rewire your car, I would recommend this. This one I would pretty much put in the same boat as that, but in cases of motorcycles and places where you're limited with space, I would use this one instead. Or this one is cheaper. Oh yeah, their stock price. We haven't spoken about price. This one is cheaper to buy. Um, I believe from WTM Tronics, you can get all the components and everything on this board. 
for 75 US dollars, not including the VR conditioner and the Arduino. So $75. If you want it assembled, I believe it's 135. But you have to so but so again, if you want to buy it, it's $75. And you get to solder it all up yourself. Some folks prefer it like that. Some folks like to do it themselves. And then you buy your VR conditioner and your Arduino, and then you fit it into whatever enclosure you want. This one. Without the Arduino, without this connector and then the pin headers which the Arduino goes into, soldered on, it's 100. We, if you want it soldered, I believe it's 115. And then again, like I said, you buy your VR conditioner, you buy your Arduino, you buy the enclosure and whatever else you need, steppers and whatnot. And this one, if I recall correctly, is for the board and the components to solder around. It's a hundred or hundred and five US dollars, if I recall correctly. Um, yes, a hundred and five. I don't believe he currently sells this one, the V zero point three dot three, um, with a assembled option. You can buy the V zero point four. Dot four, which is a factory, it's not hand assembled, it's um surface mount component, like what you get in a cell phone and whatnot. So it already comes from a factory already pre-done. So you can buy that. It's 160 something dollars. I believe 160 dollars for just the board. And then again, you buy the VR conditioner, the Arduino, the enclosures, and everything. Um yeah, so various prices by the time you're done. Buying this, if you, I think by the time you're done with this one, you're looking at roughly 200, a little over 200 US if you buy everything from WTM Tronics. Um, this one, uh, you're looking at a little bit more than that. Um, I think you're looking at around 220, 250. I haven't really crunched the numbers. This one, you're looking at about 170. By the time you buy everything you need all to. right picking up right where we left off so this one is about um if you buy it assembled from him like i said you're looking at uh, about 170 ish dollars us um to have everything you see here again this one doesn't come with an enclosure so you'd have to get one of that um i have one somewhere which i cannot find right now so, which issue is best? None of them are pretty much better than the other. The only thing you have going for you is this one, the UA4C. If we look on the other side, this one has a bit more inputs and outputs, which are already available. So you have spare inputs and spare outputs that go directly to the processor. So you can have inputs for to trigger your nitrous, to trigger whatever you want um, already out there. Um, oh yeah, so you have a stepper motor driver um, on the UA4C. Never used it, so maybe. Okay, so this one has a bit more inputs and outputs than this one, but the functionality are pretty much the same. My favorite, my favorite would be the UA4C. Um, I just find it's a bit easier to work with, uh, but uh, there's no better issue. All right, so before this gets too long, hope I didn't rumble too much. So I'm going to wrap it up. Um, yeah, so hopefully this sheds some light and then you guys are better able to choose a ECU, a speedrunner ECU for your project. Till next time, stay safe, guys.